Hello everybody, you're watching the Smoking Hot Coffee Show, where every day, Monday, Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I talk to startup founders and people in the startup world. I'm joined with... Hey guys, I'm Jeff Pelton down here in San Diego. And today we have a really great episode with Neil Patel from KissMetrics.com and Crazy Egg. Um, we spent a good amount of time talking about the startup hustle, the emotional roller coasters of being an entrepreneur in the startup world, what it takes to get going. He talked about his early days with both products. Uh, Jeff, we covered quite a bit in this uh, quick interview, huh? Yeah, absolutely. If, if you're an entrepreneur out there, he's going to give you some really good advice on how to uh, stay level-headed you know, throughout the journey and really how to uh, you know, have a, a positive outlook at a lot of the uh, you know, uphill battles that you face as an entrepreneur. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we talked about um, not only just the emotional roller coaster, but also uh, how to deal. How to, if if you happen to have a co-founder, if he his co-founder happens to be his brother-in-law. What it's like working with family, um, you know, all sorts of things. We talked about the uh, the reason uh, for his startup, the problem he was trying to solve. He's building an analytics product, which of course we all know of Google Analytics. Uh, you would think, well, you you got to be crazy to go up against Google. And we talked about uh, how to attack a specific, you know, type market like Google Analytics. Uh, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. It's a tough, it seems like it would be an impossible challenge, but, you know, with the right uh, outset, I think uh, it's really not that big of a challenge. You know, you take the right problem set and you solve it and you find people that need that solution and, uh, you know, you grow from there. Yeah, uh, one of the common things we've heard from many entrepreneurs is uh, customers are overwhelmed. Customers don't like complexity. Customers want simplicity. And in many ways, I think that's what they did. They, they took uh, the funnel analysis, which Google Analytics gives away for free, and they made it a lot simpler. And uh, by that sheer fact, people are willing to pay for a simple solution as opposed to for free for a complex solution. So that's definitely a, a big takeaway from this interview. Uh, this other really great takeaways, I uh, highly recommend you check this one out. Um, and if you do like what you're seeing, please uh, email us at info at smokinghotcoffee.com. You can also subscribe to us from many different channels. Uh, Jeff? Yeah, please do follow us on Twitter. Um, we're also on Stitcher Radio on your iPhone, you know, the iPhone and the Android apps. You can find us in the iTunes podcast and on YouTube, of course. Uh, please tell your friends if you enjoy the show. Let them know about us. Tweet at us and email us uh, what you think, uh, how you think we're doing, and if uh, there's anything you'd like us to talk about on the show. Great, and let's cut to our interview. All right, hey Neil, thanks for coming on today, man. I really appreciate it. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, it's really our pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks. It's an uh, awesome show. You guys have cranked out a lot of episodes. So. Yeah, yeah. We've been uh, doing this for a while. Today's uh, two big firsts. So you're our 101th uh, interviewee, and we've got two Patels on the show, which is even better. Yeah, a Patel sandwich. Jeff, you're in the middle of yeah. the Patel sandwich. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's not too much Patel for all of our audience today. Uh, I'll do my best to, to moderate and... <laughs> that's no, great. It's, it's good so, um, you know, I've been a big fan of Crazy Egg and Kiss Metrics. I've been kind of following you, lurking your blog, you know, just kind of uh, checking out your, you know, what you've been doing on the web for many years here. Um, can you quickly just give our audience that don't know you a little bit about your background and uh, your your products? Sure. So, uh, serial entrepreneur, been doing this for over ten years now. Started off with the uh, agency in which I used to help companies with my co-founder on improving your overall traffic, revenue to your site, conversion, so forth and so on, using SEO, content marketing, social media, etc. Okay. And from there we started getting to the product game. Uh, and our first product was crazyegg.com, still on it. And Crazy Egg is a usability analytics tool. It helps you figure out where people are clicking on your site, where they're not, how you should adjust your design, all those kind of things to maximize your usability and overall conversion rate. Then the next startup uh, that spun out of Crazy was Kissmetrics. And Kissmetrics is a data-driven, it's a data-driven analytics tool. So think of it as more like customer analytics. Helps you identify like the lifetime value of your customer, your churn, your conversion rate, your uh, average revenue per customer, MRR, things like that. So instead of focusing on increasing your traffic, it says, hey, just because your pages go up, it doesn't necessarily mean your revenue is going to go up. Right. So it helps you focus on the metrics that actually cause your revenue to increase and 
hopefully your churn to decrease in your lifetime value of your customers to go up. Gotcha. So um, usually the second question I get into is like, okay, great. These are the two problems that you're addressing. You know, why, you know, why go after these problems? I mean, uh, was Google Analytics around when you started creating this company? It was around. It actually released like six months before we launched. We okay. were slow at launching. Okay. Now, the beautiful part about all of this is um, it, it's like Google's great and we use it ourselves, but we love creating pro uh, products for marketers that solve their problems. Okay. Right? Google has to solve a problem for everyone. It's very difficult to. At Kissmetrics, we're just creating a product just for software as a service companies and e commerce companies for now. Right. Right? And helping them solve their problems. Gotcha. Now, granted, you know. Even with Crazy Egg, it's another simple solution. Instead of providing your visit count and all that kind of stuff, all it does is just visually show you how people engage with their site so you can move around elements and maximize your usability. Gotcha. So it's like we try to take one little aspect of a big you know, area and solve that problem and do it really well and better than anywhere else. Because gotcha. if you take a slice of a multi-billion dollar market cap, it's still a big enough you know, sector to play in. Gotcha, gotcha. So a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of SaaS guys want to attack markets, but then they look and they think, well, what the hell? Uh, Google's doing analytics. It's free. How the hell are we going to be able to compete in this space? And your opinion is try to find one small thing there and then really do that way better than anybody else. Is that right? That's correct. So if you know that people have a problem using funnels within Google Analytics, help them do funnels better. Gotcha. And just solving that one problem yeah. probably won't make you a hundred million bucks, but it could make you a millionaire quite easily. Right, right, gotcha. Yeah, this wow. is a big issue. I, Jeff and I have talked about this many times. Like, how do you even compete against Google, right? Jeff, you even started today yeah. talking about this. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Google's going with these Hangouts are free. Like, you know, I, I still don't think people all realize that Skype seems to not need a price tag anymore. I think. Uh, the Hangouts have you know commoditized that, but now they're kind of building apps on top of that, and they're gonna uh, what is it? They're offering like expert advice, and so this is kind of a big space where a lot of people have been trying to figure out how to uh, build a business. But now, if the mega lift Google is gonna go after it, doesn't uh, you know it's tough for the entrepreneur uh, at least uh, on the outset. That's correct. But think of it this way: Google also moves slower. A lot slower. Mm -hmm. so if you're a three-man team, you probably can beat them to the punch, especially when it comes to launching a product, innovating, all that kind of stuff. If you do well, who knows? They may even buy you out. But don't worry about the market's always big enough for a small player. Like, yeah, they may take 99% of the market, but who cares? If you're getting 1% of a big enough market, it's still something better than nothing. Gotcha, oh. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. It's, it's a big uh, mental shift, you know, to to think that way. Um, you know, I think like with your metrics, are, I, th I don't think Google Analytics is even solving the problems you're solving. Um, Th like, that's you know, correct. The, the way that you're looking at the analytics problem isn't the, the, van, you know, the number of views, but it's who are the people coming to my site. That's correct. And that's why we don't think about like who's in the market, what are they doing. The market's so new that it doesn't matter. We just need to continue to innovate and provide the best product for our customers. That's really all that matters in a new market because if you do that, and you can execute fast, well, hopefully you'll win, right? Or you should increase your odds. Gotcha. I, I really like this whole idea of not being scared by the big monolith and just trying to find just a small area that you can innovate quicker, you can make more beautiful, more clean, more more uh, unique, and, and building a good business out of that. You may not have a billion dollars, but a couple million dollars a year is not so bad. It's not bad, and you'll be shocked. Many times, that couple million dollars a year, when you start expanding, can turn to 10, 20, 40, 50 million a year, right? Because right. once you get started, you can definitely easily expand because you already have the user base. You just now need to expand feature sets, products, so forth and so on. Gotcha. Assuming they want it. All right, well, well let's uh, quickly go back in the history a little bit. Now, obviously, you're saying uh, Google Analytics came out six months after. Did you freak out, man? Because being an entrepreneur is hard enough and kind of jumping ship and doing your own thing. What ha what happened when that happened for you guys? Yeah, so we were creating a free version of Google Analytics. They just beat us to the punch. Okay. And they bought Urchin before that and so forth and so on, uh, but we didn't expect them to make it free. Right. But they definitely beat us to the punch, and we got scared, so we just launched crazy again, and it worked out. Oh. I didn't end up learning this until years later, right? Like, okay. hey, just because someone big does something doesn't mean you can't do it too or make money. Yeah. Um, 
look at Dropbox. They're kicking butt compared to Apple. Apple wants to take over that space. Right. They, you know, at least the tech blogs have reported them. They've tried many times, right. but Dropbox is still the leader. They're kicking, you know, Apple's butt by far in it. Yeah. I'm not saying Apple won't overtake them um, or you know Apple's always going to be small. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but right. Dropbox is not scared. Right. They just start off with billions of dollars in the bank account. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a great example. Even Microsoft or Windows, you would think would be a competitor to them, but somehow uh, Dropbox is just the better consumer product. Yeah, yeah just look at Skype. Yeah, you may think oh, Skype's a multi-billion dollar company, but when they started, it wasn't. They had to compete with AIM. Right. AIM was owned by AOL, and it was huge. Everyone was using it. Right. Now I don't know anyone who uses AIM, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. Right, so uh, let's go into uh, Crazy Egg a little bit about the whole heat tracking. Obviously, this is a pretty, really cool tech. Uh, are you a developer? Did you make this thing yourself? How did you go about that? Yeah, so not a developer. My co-founder is not a developer either. We tend to find developers and designers and hire them. Okay. So uh, how did you, like, did you read about this somewhere and thought, man, this is a great tech. Let me find some developers and make this. Like, what did the germ of the the problem and the idea come from? So the problem first started in which Google had overlays, and same with I think it's called Click Tracks. Is it called Click Tracks? I don't think they're any or they're not around anymore. And they had this site overlay feature, which just shows you where people click. But there was a big problem with Google's site overlay, in which if you have a contact link at the top. And then another one at the bottom. They'll show the same amount of clicks. They'll just combine them. Yeah. So you won't know where people are clicking, so that way it's harder to maximize design elements. Okay. And especially for a newbie, you won't know about A-B testing or how to run A-B testing or any of that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like on the basic levels. So we're just like, well, let's provide an overlay that actually helps solve this problem. Yeah. And then one of our designers and developers came to the idea, like, well, you also want us to show it in, like, a density format. I'm like, what do you mean? Like a heat map. You know, like hotspots mean people click a lot. Hotspots mean they don't. I'm like, okay. great idea. So it was like a team effort, but that's how we ended up coming up with all the concepts. Wow. So obviously a collaboration, and and again looking at some specific area that the big guys are kind of lose lost the lost their way, and then just attacking that. That's correct. And and did you? How did you first valid? Like, how did you? Did you have an MVP up? I know uh, Eric's book hadn't come out then. and like, How did you get the first version up? How long did it take? And when did you know this was going to work? Yeah, uh, so we didn't get an MVP up. We didn't know about those concepts. We didn't know, we didn't know anything. We just created it. It took us like a year to get it up. Wow, And we year. got it up, we just prayed, and it worked. <laughs> I love that. The pray and it worked. That's great. It was like luck. Uh, <laughs> right timing, first to do it. And the other thing that was huge for us was it was a very, and it still is, it's a very simple solution that solves one problem really well. Got you. We've heard this theme over and over again, Jeff. Correct me if I'm wrong. The whole idea of simplicity. Uh, taking something that's already out there that's complex, made by a big company, and making it really simple, and that's it. Yeah, so people are coming to Crazy Egg with real specific design and marketing issues, probably that they need answers solved, uh, or you know, problems solved with you know answers to their questions of, you know, should they do A or B? And they use Crazy Egg to determine that. That's correct. Yeah. So I mean, there's a huge demand for for those specific questions. I'm sure uh, it's great that they can come to Crazy Egg. T t I mean, a little bit of the technology I think is what is amazing. You know, uh, Google doesn't offer it. Is it because why don't they offer something like this uh, advanced? Is it because the added bandwidth and complexity, and um, it wouldn't be used uh, by as many people? Or to be honest, I'm not 100 percent sure why they do or don't do it. But it seems you know whatever they're doing seems to be working out for them. They're yeah. smart guys there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, assuming yeah. everything's thought out pretty well. Right. Right. Wow. If uh, if you had, uh, this is maybe a little bit of a complicated question, but if there's one specific area of analytics that nobody's really conquered well, what would that be in your opinion? So uh, still the customer analytics in which even it's still such a new market. I think it's all about your customers, right, and tying it into a whole business from customers to CRMs to like, you know, who's purchasing what history or what do they want to see and what do they not, so that way you can only show them what they want to see. Okay. And making actions out of it, I think the personalization part, 
and identifying your customers and stuff, it's not an easy thing to do, especially when you have multiple platforms and trying to do it cross-platform, right? Web, mobile, desktop, right. so forth and so on. But, uh, yeah, I think that's a new market, and I think five years from now you're going to see a lot more of that than you are now. Uh, let me let – me, I'm just trying to clarify this. When you say personalization, are you talking about – uh, sort of the functionality that we see uh, at Amazon where they'll know what you bought before and they show you what that kind of thing? Basically, like uh, personalization, like if I know John is looking for a skateboard and he's on Amazon and he doesn't want to buy anything else, I should only show him a skateboard. How can I just get him to skateboard as quick as possible? Then once he's checking out, give him all the other things that I know he's going to need to go along with that skateboard, such as elbow pads, helmets, and so forth and so on, right? It's like, gotcha. how do you do all of that? And it becomes really tricky. It's not an easy thing to solve. But I think it will eventually be solved, right? So some entrepreneur that's out there listening, if you're saying that if they built like a plug-in for Magento or something like that uh, that uses this personalization technology, you think they'd do well? I think they would do well because your conversions would go through the roof. Gotcha. <laughs> this sounds a lot like retargeting. Is this very similar in Europe? Opinion? Uh, no, remarketing is some of it is your side to get in and come back, right? What I'm saying is Nordstrom's has hundreds and thousands of products. How could you go to Nordstrom.com, just the .com, the homepage, and it shows you the one product that they know you want to get? Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. so con adding context to help people simplify what they're trying to uh, achieve. In, in a sea of, um, you know, crazy, like, too much stuff on Nordstrom.com. Yeah. That's correct, and I don't think the web is there yet, but eventually they'll get there. Gotcha. <laughs> wow. Um, so tell us a little about, um, you know, uh, you, you've got an, um, an impressive Twitter f audience. Your, your blog is fantastic. Before when we before we got on the show today, you're... You're like, oh, I'm working on a, on a post right now, and I'm taking a screenshot. Clearly, content marketing is a big, you know, you're big on that, uh, big on inbound. Tell us more about, you know, th that journey. How many, how many times you write, how long you've been writing, the ideas, when you get them. So, yeah, I get ideas randomly just throughout the day uh, talking to people, and I write at least twice a week. I usually write every Sundays. Okay. Uh, and every Wednesdays, because I post every Monday and every Thursday. Okay. Uh, Jeff's got your blog pulled up here, so we've got the whole five easy tools, 54 Google Analytics resources. So you've got kind of like this list-type post where you list several things. and Is that a common? Yeah, they work really well. They're popular, right? 676 tweets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it sure does. Um, do, Obviously, this is a fair amount of work. Do you do you get the idea, and then you're like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna put this. Oh, in. so with me, I don't write them all, right? Like at the bottom, you'll see the author name on there. A lot of them are not written by me because I just don't have the time. So this oh. one was written by Zach. Oh, okay. He's part of this metrics team. So. Yeah, so these are all part of your team. I was thinking maybe they're all guest posts, but these are still part of Kiss Metrics. Some of them are guest posts. Some of them are part of Kiss Metrics. Some okay. of them are by me. Gotcha. And if if they're, you know, we've heard this several times. A lot of startup entrepreneurs mention that inbound content marketing is one of the best converting for them. Um, what, what's any good tips you want to share with how you, you know, go about compiling your posts? And yeah, it, it's just coming up with the topic. The topic typically is what are you feeling that is a pain in the marketplace, and just doing research and writing a good, detailed, thorough post. Don't write something that's mediocre. It's better to produce no content than it is to produce mediocre content. How do you know the difference? I'm, I know it's a tough one. Yeah, uh, you could just tell. Like, a, a good thing to think about is, would you want to tweet it? If you're willing to tweet something, you know it's way better than if you're not willing to tweet it. Mm. That's it. I like that. That's a real simple uh, qualification. Yeah. Is it shareable? Yeah. Uh, assuming you're assuming you're picky. You know, Twitter user or Facebook user. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, yeah, sure, whatever. Then it doesn't matter. But if you're really picky and only share what's important, then yeah. Right, right. Would you share this if you read this somewhere else? I like that. That's really great. Um, Interesting. For those of us that are try to get into blogging and then kind of lose steam, are, are, do you have any motivational tips? Like, how do you keep how do you keep that going? So 
you're saying how do you just keep blogging and like keep at it year after year? Yeah. Well, the big thing is consistency, and if you aren't consistent, your traffic's going to eventually dip. So you have no choice. Mm. But the way you stay motivated is you just keep trying to produce great content and try to engage with your audience, respond to comments, help them out. Okay. When you're creating that kind of engagement, what ends up happening is you build an emotional connection with your readers, your audience, and you're more likely to continue doing it over and over again because you're looking forward to something. Right. right. How important is your release cycle? You said you know that you uh, specifically post them on what is it Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, well, the blog posts five days a week, but I myself uh -huh. typically okay. not always. I write on Mondays and or I post on Mondays and Thursdays. I mean, how do you keep yourself to the regular? How important is the the schedule, and how do you keep yourself to it when, like you said, you have to make sure that it's a, a you know not just a meteor ochre post and that you've done your research and everything. So. Um, I'm just committed to it, right? It's just like working out. It just becomes form and habit, and I know I have to do it every Wednesday and Sunday. Gotcha. And I'm usually good on the Sunday ones because I usually can crank it out by Saturday. The Wednesday ones are usually, or the Thursday ones are usually always on Wednesday. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. How many hours do you spend working on a post? Uh, at least four. Wow. But it varies, right? Like, I'm doing stuff in between, so I've been writing this post since the morning, but I've been on almost back-to-back -back calls since the morning. Okay. So it's like the amount of time I'm actually spending writing isn't uh, too often. That's okay. why when we were starting the webinar, I was like taking screenshots and stuff because I'm just trying to get in as much stuff right. as possible. Yeah, yeah, No, this is a, definitely a job. This is definitely something you got to be committed to doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just, I've tried doing this in the past, uh, Neil, and I just get started and then I just can't keep it up. And so far, having Jeff on to do this show has been really helpful for me. It's almost like going to having a workout buddy and you're with somebody and yep. he, he keeps you honest. That's really been helping me. So Yeah, if you don't have someone with you, it makes it a lot harder. But I like that idea, right? Yeah. Uh, you guys make a great team, and by having both of you, it's much more effective than not having both of you. So. Yeah. Yeah, it you know helps us uh, stick to uh, the principles of shipping. You know, at least trying to put something out there. Uh, you know, hopefully we don't put out too much mediocre content. But uh, you know, I think it's uh, we're trying to work out that muscle. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And video blogging, and specifically for those that don't like to write a lot. Really, it comes natural. I mean, I just like to talk. And my friends and family tell me the same thing. I'm just likes to talk too much, and this works for me. I mean, it's you know, for those uh, that are extroverted like myself, um, you know, it's a tip for all yeah, those extroverts. And I don't mind writing the uh, the contextual blog post format for it, and I, I think it's fun to explore the podcast and the the video uh, format. I mean, what do you see, um, Neil, in the trends of podcasting? I mean, do you think? it's ever going to take off and hit mainstream, or is it just going to kind of continue to live with the early adopters and tech community? Not really. I think podcasting reached its peak with uh, Odeo, right, which is Ev Williams' startup before Free Twitter. Twitter, yeah. And then uh, right at that time, because podcasting was blowing up, and then it just didn't take off as a medium. Everyone's like, well, why do podcasting when you can just use YouTube, <laughs> right, or whatever their reasons were. But I'm not saying podcasting's dead. It does work. Pat yeah. from Smart Passive Income is a, has a really popular podcast. Right. I just think that podcasts didn't take off mainstream as well as they liked, and it works really well for topics like business or marketing or whatever it may be. But for a lot of mainstream topics, video is easier. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Uh, although I have to, there are some things that are happening recently with uh, Stitcher being installed in some new cars. Maybe when when, the, when all the cars start getting, you know, sort of a podcasting station built in, maybe. Yeah, that, that'll probably help. Yeah, yeah, because I know a lot of people are used to listening to radio or listening uh, in the car. So, um, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about entrepreneurship. You've been uh, you've been in the, at this game for many years here. What do you? How do you handle the sort of emotional roller coaster that is? You know, being a startup entrepreneur, man, when when you get, when you hit certain roadblocks and you you're like, man, this nobody's signing up or nobody's reading their blog or nobody's you know, nobody's willing to keep developing this. How do you deal with the the failures? Yeah, and on a side note, I do apologize for yawning. I'm like, I've been up late and I work a lot of hours and I don't drink coffee, so okay. But uh, loving the interview, but. Yeah, so you're going to go through roller, a roller coaster, and it's natural. There's a lot of ups, downs, happy moments, scary moments, you know, exciting moments. So the way I look at it is you have to try to keep level-headed at all times. So 
here's a simple trick. When things are going great, remember that they're they're going better for someone else. Oh. When things are, you know, going really poorly, and it's not going in your favor, realize that hey, things are much worse for someone else out there. Wow. So just try to stay level-headed the whole time, and hmm. I think if you do that, you'll be much better off. Wow, that's a good way to put things in perspective. I like it, man. Yeah, I like that one. That's good. Yeah, yeah, because I, there are some days I'm like, yeah, and then so, oh, you know, it's just this crazy. Yeah, it goes back and forth. Stay level-headed. It makes it much easier. Yeah, yeah. Less stressful too. Yeah, definitely. Good point. Level out, level out the uh, roller coaster. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Uh, how, uh, again, going on the entrepreneurial tip and, and the modern age of virtual teams, how many people are part of your startups? I mean, how big is the team so far? At Kissmetrics? I don't know the exact count. I know above 30. Okay. Maybe we're getting close to 40 now? Wow. Take a guess. 40? So. That's a lot of folks. How, how do you, uh, I'm assuming it's a virtual team, right? Or do you have an office or? No, we have an office. There are, we do have a lot of people who are virtual as well, but we have a lot of people in the office as well. I think it's like 50, 50. How do you handle um, productivity issues, company culture virtually? Yeah, uh, we just do unique creative things like weekly calls, hip chat. Uh, we do meetups like WordPress does, right, like where companies, all, everyone over the world gets together at least, we try to do at least once a year. Okay. So all those little things really do help, and we really promote like just really getting to know people. So for example, if it's someone's birthday, we'll send a mass email saying, "Hey, happy birthday!" Blah blah blah. Right. Right. So, or if someone's about to get married, we'll send them, a, you know, a wedding present, even though that they're in a different country or whatever it may be. Right. But we try to do like a lot of little things that brings everyone together. Okay. Gotcha. I, and when these weekly calls happen, is it is, is it all hands on deck, or is it just certain people in certain time zones? All, all hands on deck. Then there's other calls where other people in different time zones. But the way we look at things is just action items. What are you trying to accomplish this week? And at the end of the week, what did you accomplish and didn't achieve, and why didn't you achieve it, and how are you going to improve? But we just base it off results. I don't care if you start your work at 11 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. If you're okay. getting your job done, it doesn't matter what hours you want to work. Gotcha. Wow, man. Cool. 30 people uh, up to 40. Sounds like you guys are doing real good, man. You'd always be doing better, but yeah. I like that. There's that, there's exactly. that level head. Yeah, I like that. Beautiful. Um, so um, how uh, another entrepreneurial issue, w when you're trying to set up uh, you know, joint ventures, when you're trying to just get things done, trying to get other people involved, how do you handle the rejection? How do you handle the no's? Uh, so every time I look at no's, I think, like, cool, I'm getting closer to a yes. Because eventually someone's going to say yes. Okay. So just keep at the nose until someone says yes, and you're like, I got one. I love it. That's good. Yeah. There it is. It's always about transforming that initial knee-jerk reaction, right? You're like, okay, a no, yes. It, exactly. Like eventually, you're gonna, it's like fishing. You're going to sit there with a pole. Yeah, you may not be catching fish, but eventually if you sit there with a pole out for you know years, eventually some fish is going to come and bite on assuming there's actually fish in the pond, right? Right. So. Right. It's just a time game. Right, yeah. Yeah, I hear you. It's just a matter of time. Just got to keep at it. Um, in that in that whole sort of uh, failure, how, how do you, like, Do you, are you always, like, picturing out, okay, in about a year this is going to be solved? Or do you do you look at the future and think that that's one of the criteria for getting through the nose? Uh, I don't really look at it that way. I just look at it. I just need to keep at it and be persistent. So I don't try to daydream about what could happen, how much money I could make, what's going to happen in the future. I just go and take action and work. And that. as long as you continue improving and you're better than you were the previous day, as my business partner loves to say, right, you're much better off. I like that a lot. And just keeping at it each day. I mean, if you set out for a, a specific reason, your motive shouldn't change day after day just because of some rejection. Yeah, so they should yeah, you're you're still going after the same mission. Let's talk about co-founders. Uh, obviously, you work with Hitton. Is here is basically is a fifty-fifty split? Or is your co-founder? Or? Yeah, we have investors too, but yeah, fifty-fifty split. We're uh, always even partners. We don't really think about any of that. We just do it together. How um, how did you hook up with him? How'd you meet him? 
Why'd you guys decide yeah. to go in together? My sister introduced us. My sister's married to him. Oh, okay. okay he's your brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, wow. All right. Let's talk about the whole issues with family, working with family. Uh, uh, does that ever uh, get in? Have you any issues where you're like, oh, you know, he's not pulling his weight, but he's like my brother-in-law. I got to. No, we're both hard workers, so it actually works out really well. Okay. That's good. And if we have issues, we have a mediator, my sister, his wife, right? So. Right, right. Exactly. Right. I like that. That's really great. Um, well, cool. Uh, where do you see – let's talk a little about the future. Where do you see your products going? What's your roadmap for the next uh, six six months or so? Yeah, uh, so we're not talking about too much about product, but we're making quite a bit of drastic changes. So I think this new stuff you'll see it will be awesome. Wow. Okay, that's not saying much. <laughs> All right. So are, are we, uh, am I, uh, I might have think that maybe mobile is going to be a big push for you guys, tablet? Uh, you'll see. We're big believers, and we don't like talking about what we're going to do. We'll do it, and we launch it, and it's like you either love it or you don't, and if you don't love it, we want to know why and how we can improve upon it. All right. But we hate talking about release dates and all this kind of stuff because, as many of you guys know, with engineering, sometimes stuff doesn't happen or things can change, and the last thing I want to do is be like, working on this, and then we find out from a customer or a lot of customers that that's not what they want, and we're in prototyping phase right now, right. and the next thing you know, I'm scrapping it, but I told everyone that we're going to do it in X amount of months, right? Right, right, right. That's cool. Um, yeah. You know, I, I was just going to ask, if what, um, oh my God, I, I lost my question. <laughs> Uh, sorry. How do, how do you manage? Uh, so you have the same co-founder for multiple companies. How do you manage working at? Uh, you know, manage multiple businesses and the roadmaps for them. Uh, him and I only focus on Kissmetrics. We don't focus on Crazy Egg. Someone else runs that company. Oh, okay, gotcha. Actually, my sister, his wife, runs Crazy Egg. Oh, wow! So a little, big, okay. nice little family business. I like that. There you go. That's, Works out quite well. That's great. Um, that's a great way to separate your focus. Keep yourself head head down on Kiss Metrics, then. Yep. Let's Perfect. talk. Let's talk a little bit about productivity. How, what is your normal day looking like these days? Start at eight, finish uh, like 11, 12 at night. Oh wow! <laughs> no balance. I'm not hearing any balance here, Neil. <laughs> All day. Well, I travel a lot. I have some fun over the weekends every once in a while, but okay. I like working. Gotcha. Um, a personal question: uh, If you have a girl, do you have a girlfriend? Are you married? Nope. So that helps. That helps a it lot. Helps. It helps a lot. Yeah, I'm married, and uh, yeah, my wife's always telling me I, I've like got to try to maintain that balance. Um, you know, the coming in at a certain time, leaving at a certain time, that kind of thing. Well, it sounds like you're you're so dedicated to work. How how did you get yourself into entrepreneurship to begin with? I didn't have too many options. I want to make money at the age of 16. And you can't really get a lot of jobs. So, <laughs> so you made your own job. Yeah, I had no other choice. Wow. If someone said, "Hey, come work for us for a hundred grand a year," I would have not been an entrepreneur. I wouldn't be making a hundred grand a year. Wow. Well, ah, interesting. I'm, I am a little curious now. Well, what was that back at sixteen? What were you doing? I was doing a job board that was replicating Monster.com. It failed miserably. Wow. So a job board and it failed miserably. Like, what did yep. you? Well, how did you pick yourself up after that big failure and decided to do something else? Uh, well, through that whole experience, I learned how to market a site, and I ended up meeting some guys who were like, hey, do you want to market our site for us, and we'll pay X dollars, and I'm like, cool, and started a new business site. It was pretty much by luck. Wow. I think a lot of entrepreneurship, a lot of it has yeah, to be Yeah, luck. a lot of it is luck, yeah. Um, so so let's, let, let's get into customer acquisition marketing a little bit. What, In your opinion, there's so many paid, non-paid methods. What, in your opinion, works really well for non-paid? Content marketing, like creating infographics, webinars, videos, all this kind of stuff, interviews, okay. uh, blog posts, and then social media marketing, right? Like Twitter, Facebook, there's a lot of traffic on the sites. Facebook is like what, number one, number two most popular site on the web. Yeah, yeah. A lot of business that can be generated. Right. SEO is another huge one, right? Google is also really popular. So. Those are the main avenues for non-pay. And for Kiss Metrics specifically, are you are you finding most of your traffic, your converting traffic, is it all content marketing? Most of it? All content marketing. Yep, all organic. Wow, that is awesome. Do you uh, go into the Google Keyword Tool and look for what people are searching for to get ideas for the for the for the titles or? 
no, we just write content based on what we think people want to read. We don't even look at titles or do anything for SEO. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they just have you can just have a committed audience. People that have, committed uh, audience. That's right. Yeah. The social following helps, right? Because when you tweet stuff out, it all adds up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for those that are getting started on Twitter, what any any great tips you have? Tweet good content, follow people who are in your industry and engage with them by like responding to them, retweeting their stuff. All like all those kind of things really do help. Gotcha. Um, you know, I've seen your name quite a bit on, on, on the conference circuit. What have you got coming up uh, in terms of conferences? Where are you going to be speaking at? I have a lot. Uh, I think my next one's at Stanford. Okay. Then I think I do one in Singapore after. Then Atlanta, then Istanbul. And then I think San Diego, all in September. Wow. Dude, that is crazy. What's that like, man, doing all these conferences? I mean, give us a, give us a little taste. You fly there, you speak, you go back to the room, you work, and you fly back home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, man! You're missing. The, aren't you meeting some interesting people along the way? Uh, fun little little after. Yeah, but I don't have that much time, so I'm end up. I really do speak, go back to the room, work, and then fly back. Wow, you are hardcore about working, man. Dedicated. I work. That's all there is. So at least I'm. I love it, right? right. For me, it's fun. It's so great. I love that, man. I really do. I can't see. Yeah, what, I, this is obviously a key reason why you're so successful. You're yeah, working all the yeah, time. Yeah, I, I think that's so huge that you love what you're doing. What do you have uh, to say to the people listening that might not be in love with what they're doing and you know searching for that passion? Um, eventually you'll find it. Figure out what your passion is, and if your passion is about and if there's a big enough problem in that space, then go and do that because if you love what you're doing, you'll work harder, which means you'll probably be more successful. Mm, I like that. Yeah. Good point. It'd probably be better at it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like when you're talking about blogging, how do you stay consistent? Well, when you love blogging, there's no issue. But when you're blogging about a topic you don't care about, you're not going to succeed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, passion is one. Passion is key. Um, we had uh, Dame Maxwell and Andy Drish from the Foundation on a couple of episodes ago. They're big fans of this whole, like, find the pain, find the problem, build your, build your business based on solving the pain. What's a big problem that you're noticing right now in your life, online or offline, that you wish somebody would solve? Email. So Google doesn't do a good job, in my opinion, with the promotions tab. Just a lot of people, it does help to some extent, but people get a flood of emails. How do you help them go through it all? Yeah. Like yeah. that really ends up coming down to it, right? I use Unroll Me to unsubscribe from all the junk that yeah. people add me to without me actually even subscribing to it. Right. But still, if I have to respond to 300 emails in a day, it adds up, right? So. Uh, yeah. This is a great topic. Oh, how many emails do you normally have every day? I'm just curious. Uh, in the hundreds. I'm probably saying like at least 200, maybe 300 now. I don't know. I stop keeping track. I'm just like I just respond to all days and times of the night. Right. I, I noticed in your signature you actually had a phone number. Like this is the way to get a hold of me right now. This is you know, later on. And, and how, how many people end up calling you directly? A few people a day. And then I usually tell them to email me. I don't know why, but I should probably take it off. Because you're usually calling me when I'm in another meeting or on a call, right? Right. So. right. That's great. I called you, and I was surprised you actually answered. I'm like, holy cow, you answered the phone. And yeah, and then they probably told you to email me, right? Yeah, yeah, you did. You told me to email you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, which kind of defeats the whole phone calling. But I was still very impressed that you gave out your number and you did answer your phone. I was really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Interesting. So it sounds like uh, email, though, is still really ripe for disruption. Uh, I think it was like Mailbox app. I haven't looked at it m too much myself, but a lot of uh, startups seem to be trying to uh, approach that area, uh, which, you know, from the beginning of our discussion, we've said would be, look, seem like an uphill battle. That's correct, and Mailbox isn't a great app if you have a lot of emails. Mailbox works out great if you're la di da and you know, going along your day. Because telling me to follow up later, the most inefficient part about emails is people read the emails and they don't respond right away. Right. Because then they read the emails, they're like, oh, I'm going to get back to it. Then they have to get back to it, read yeah. it again, yeah, then yeah, respond yeah. to it. Right. Like you save so much time by just reading, responding, right, right. then and there. That's it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I completely agree, man, this whole flood of emails. Uh, I kind of do like the tab system, but I agree with you. The promotionals tabs needs to be divided up further or something 
additional sort of logic needs to be applied there. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm assuming then you probably take the strategy of like uh, addressing your email inbox and responding when you can throughout the day instead of letting it interrupt you. How do you, uh, between emails and Twitter, how do you not get um, your day completely, you know, uh, interrupted throughout, you know, while you're trying to get stuff done? Uh, I'm used to it, so I multitask. So if this wasn't a video call and it was an audio, right. I would be doing emails right now as you guys are. Right, right, right. You know what? Yeah. This this goes this flies in the face of conventional wisdom these days where multitasking is bad and you should be focused on what you're doing. You know, what do they call context switching is horrible. What do you say to all that? They're probably right. It's so funny because when I do an interview and it's not video and it's just audio and I'm doing other stuff, the interviews aren't as great. Right. If I do interviews and I'm not doing anything else, they're probably like, Five ten times better, right? But right. Yeah, no yeah. choice. I'm just trying to get work done and please everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It really is tough. Well, uh, you know, it, it's been really great having you on today, uh, Neil. We'll wrap it up. Uh, I know you're a busy guy. Uh, if there's um, uh, one piece of parting advice that you should have for entrepreneurs out there that are starting off, what would it be? Yeah, it would be uh, you're gonna make mistakes. Don't worry about it. Just continue learning from them and pushing forward, right? You don't really fail until you quit. So mistakes aren't failure. Quitting is what's failure. I like that. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, we've heard that quite a bit. Yeah, persistence and learning from failure. Yeah, absolutely. If, that's a great way to put it, though. You don't lose until you quit. Yeah, yep. that's it. Uh, if people want to get a hold of you, is it a general email or um, Twitter or whatever? What's a good way? Uh, just quicksprout.com. Okay, sounds good. Well, uh, Neil, we'll definitely check back with you in a few months, see how you're doing. Um, thanks again for coming on the show. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Take care.